What's up guys, so today we have Steam or Dream Enders for our Steam free to play review of the day. This game at in the Steam profile tells you that it's not a finished game yet, so if you want a complete story, bypass this game, but I do what I want, <laughs> so I'm gonna review it anyways. You can pick between a male and a female, you can't really edit their appearance, and but it does affect the story a little bit, it seems the chat, and my actual name doesn't fit, so we're going with my backup, Sir Fluffs. So in this game you have really only two mechanics you move and you use Z to interact with things and so I will tell you from the get-go that this game has the story it seems to be really well done like unlike Robo Therium the crappy visual novel this actually seems to have really good interactions and dialogues with the characters and what you say matters. Like, I think that is the main point of this game. Like, what you do and what you say is very important. And the characters are pretty interesting as well. I really like Ambrose because Ambrose is like a Sundare, tough chick kind of character, which is like my thing. I like that. <laughs> but, uh, and so at this part, I mess up because you, first you talk to her, Violet, and if you say you don't have any questions and you talk to her again without doing the meeting, then it kind of messes you, it like gives you a different way where you have to do the game. You can't go through like the storyline progression that I think they had set forward. You have to figure out your own way in the world, which is kind of annoying. So this playthrough wasn't my favorite, but I played through it again to give it like a fair shot. And I feel like my second playthrough, which I'm going to include as well, was a lot more fun because I actually had people telling me where to go and what I was supposed to do and interactions that actually like progress the game instead of the game just progressing on its own. So these two turds seem to represent like different factions. One's a PvE guild that thinks by beating the game that everyone will be freed from this MMO that everybody's trapped in, kind of like Sword Art Online. And then there's a PvP faction that literally thinks if they kill all the other guilds then everybody will be released, blah 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 blah. And the PvE guys shut the gate and the PvP guys are like, No, we need to go outside the gate and kill each other so we can get out of this game. And the PvE guys are like, No, we're going to beat the final boss. So that's basically your two factions. They don't really seem too prevalent at the moment. But as the story develops, I can see like you having to choose a side or like whatnot. Which could be pretty interesting. But what's kind of weird about this whole interaction is that they still seem to be like friends. Like they're friends with each other <laughs> after all this arguing. Like it really seems like it's a heated argument and then he ends it with, Good luck buddy, I hope you find what you're looking for. But that kind of shows the cohesion of everybody trying to get out the game. And uh, I saved one dude, but I killed this dude just to see what was going to happen. I was like, oh man, it's good, check it, log out real quick, let's see what happens. And he's like, oh yeah man, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a try, sounds good, why not? <laughs> and then he dust, man. Dude just straight up dust. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> Alright, so like I was saying, this gate kind of opens on its own. Like in the second playthrough, I actually had to like talk to characters and like interact with them to figure out how to get the gate open. And this one, I did not. So this player housing, I'm going to include at the end of the clip. It's kind of like extra kind of credit kind of thing. So the Goblin Tower, we got Damien, the PvE nerd, standing outside blocking the entrance or whatnot. And he's like, oh, don't go in there, but I do what I want, as I mentioned. <laughs> First room we come into, there's a dead body, pretty much. You see the little circle thing that I got from the one dude I convinced to kill himself. And this is your option menu, which is kind of cool. You can see your companions and how they feel about you from interactions that you've had with them. Your inventory for items that you get. And you can save, so that's always good. And this is a secret passage. It took me a little bit to find this. I, it's pretty hidden. And then you see all the crazy amounts of goblins from like Goblin Slayer waiting just to freaking destroy you. This dude is awesome. He's like, so goblins in this game are really dumb. And I was like, oh, I'll give you a gift. Let me live. And he's like, I don't want it. Rude. <laughs> that is rude. <laughs> God. So this is where the game starts to really shine about showing you what your decisions were in the game and how it affects it. Like how you sneak past these goblins or like really has an impact on the story. <laughs> Smart goblin disguised as stupid you. I love that line. That is so good. And then they all know, they all know that I snuck past. They're like, oh, you're the smart goblin that makes ugly humans look stupid. I'm like, ah, yeah, that's me. I am the one. <laughs> the chosen one. The best goblin ever. And then you get to your goblin king. And he is a little bit more intelligent, but not <laughs> very, not very. But he does have an orc waifu that I'm 
going to steal from him in the second part, you'll see. That's my waifu for laifu now. And like, the whole guards and the king's interactions changed by how you got past the goblins, as you'll see in the second part as well, since I did it a different way. And Orca's like, yeah, he is just one human. <laughs> He's like, impossible! <laughs> they have like a very uh, strenuous relationship, it would seem. I'm just saying it's impossible. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying it's impossible you're right. I really love the dialogue in this game. It's super well done. That is like the main draw to this game, is that the dialogue's really well done, and the characters remember things you've done in the game. One thing I will say, that one of my major complaints in the game, though, is that the sprites are ugly. <laughs> God, they're not very well done. If they could get some better sprites, that would do a whole lot for the game. Granted, I get it's in the, like a free-to-play small game, and it's, it's I gotta criticize it the same anyways. I gotta look at the game for how it compares to all other games, not just how it is for a free game. I'm trying to find like a great free-to-play game. But yeah, so that's the one choice I chose the first time I went through there. So this I should have read before I started the game, but it basically tells you that the game ends at the Goblin Tower. I didn't know that, so I wandered around forever. But this time I'll be a woman character just to see the different interactions. Now I am my alter ego, Ma'am Fluffs. <laughs> it's Ma'am! <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> so like I said, this time we're going to actually go to the meeting and figure out what's going on. Which has some very interesting interactions. You find out that she works in a clothing shop, which is important because you need to talk to her before you go to the gate. And then you learn more about Ambrose, which is my soon dear waifu. With her crazy ugly sprite. But whatever, you know. But you also find out that uh, this guy's a little kid. I can't. Jack Earn. Yeah, he's crazy. He's a little bit dumb. But, uh. <laughs> he's an interesting character. I think he's actually, like, secretly the main bad guy, but we don't know that. Yeah, he's, like, trying to pretend that he's old enough to play the game, but he's not. I think he's, like, either 12 or it's, like, the facade that he has before he shows you that he's, like, an evil, terrible person. And then Ambrose is, like, questioning <laughs> his age. But, uh, oh, one thing that's really important is you have to, like, s stay still to hit Z and open doors. Wait, what? <laughs> Jackron's a liar. There's no way. <laughs> Ambrose. <laughs> Tell him, Ambrose, he's a liar. <laughs> Ambrose cusses a lot in this game, too. But, uh, yeah, we gotta get to the bottom of that. Let me talk to Ambrose real quick. You gotta be a woman, right? 100%. There's no way. Just super Cinder. Jackern just doesn't understand, I'm thinking. Alright, well, we'll have to leave that up for further storyline development, I guess. But <laughs> I'm gonna assume it's a woman until, until then. Until we find out for sure. Alright, continuing on. Now we have to, like, start on our main quest. After you talk to Damien, you talk to, what is her name, Victoria? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe Victoria. And then tell her the gate's shut, and then she'll tell you to go to Ambrose. And Ambrose is in the jail that you can get to. Like I was saying, though, something I need to emphasize a little bit more is that when you're opening doors, you have to be standing still and press the, or the door will not open. This took me a little bit to figure out. I was like, why don't these doors open? Are they all locked? Is there nothing in this game? But you just have to stand still and hold the Z, hit the Z key. So Ambrose comes and then she tells Damien that he's a piece of crap and to open the gate because you can't just trap people in here because you don't want them to die. We have to like, we still have to f explore the world you, world, you can't trap us in here and whatnot. But then Ambrose gives me a dagger, which is cool. Very, very useful item. <laughs> I found out. See, she does care. She's just a super Cinder waifu. That might be a dude. Who knows? We'll find out. So, we're back to this goblin guy. Let's test out our new dagger shiv. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> so, this is how you can see how the world kind of changes a little bit more by these interactions with the orc dude. Like, when he calls his goblins in here, there's only two instead of the four. Because <laughs> you killed the rest. You killed the other two. Or I killed the other two. You didn't do it. I did it. But then I thought, eh, I'll stab him too, it's working so far. And he's like, nah, <laughs> no fam, it's not gonna go down like that. I am not a regular goblin, you, there's no way you're just stabbing me. 
And then you go through this interaction again. It's basically the same thing. Also, it kind of like ends the same way regardless of the option I chose. Like they both just kind of escape. Even though um, I told him that I killed his goblin people. I also take offense that he thought I couldn't kill all of his goblins just because I'm a woman. Kind of. So this time, as I spoiled it a little bit earlier, I'm going to take his woman as my own. My secondary waifu, just in case Ambrose does end up being a dude. He's like, she'd never do that. And he's like, she's like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Maybe he's on to something. Maybe I should go with the human. It'd be better for us because he's so strong. What's wrong with listening to her? <laughs> That's awesome. It's pretty funny that she calls me her, like this interaction still happens even though I'm playing a female character. <laughs> or because like I volunteer for tribute <laughs> to get, be with the woman. Oh, it's so good. I really like the dialogue in this game. That is like uh, I'm really excited to see how they how they update it. I don't know how long it's going to take them to update it because sometimes it takes forever. And I'm just I'm excited to see where this game's going to go. I don't know how long it's going to take though. Hopefully not too long. I don't know what's up with those numbers, the twelve and the zero. It doesn't make any sense to me. And the. Yeah, I don't really know what happened with that interaction because of the 12 and the 0. I don't know what that means. But then you basically get to the same ending. This game gets a 5.5 out of 10 because it's still super short. The story's not finished. And there's, it's really simplistic. The graphics are pretty bad. And there's a lot of things they can improve on. And I think it has a lot of a p potential. So it gets a, it's a little bit above average for a game. As it is right now. I'm super excited for the future though and can't wait to see what they do with it. Thanks for watching, as always. Please like and subscribe. Bye!